Hey everybody, it's that time of the week where I need to come up with a weekend assignment for this Sunday's live stream. Thank you, Shane, for reminding me. And as I opened up my Trillium note-taking app, I realized that I haven't really ever talked about Trillium on the channel here. So that's what today's video is gonna be. Now, if you're new to the channel, the weekend assignment is just something that I try to come up with every Friday. Sometimes it doesn't happen until Saturday or occasionally Sunday early morning, uh, but I try to get it out so that we can go over the answers together uh, during the Sunday afternoon live stream. And what I use is a program called Trillium, and I'll put a bunch of uh, links and notes in the description, but basically it's a note-taking app that can sync across platforms, and it has a really great sharing feature. Uh, like for example, like Weekend Assignment 4, uh, there's a cool little uh, little tab here, you open this up, you turn on sharing and then it generates a link for you that you can share and it's publicly viewable. It's not editable, but it's viewable on a website. So for example, if we click on this, it will load that up on the public uh, site. And so this is the link that I share out for the weekend assignment. Everybody can see it and it's, it's really, really convenient. Now, Trillium is an open source app. You can go to uh, GitHub and I'll, again, I'll put the link in the in the description, but there it's really two parts. So you have a client and you can download the clients on this page right here. Um, I'm using the, the Debian deb file here to install it, uh, but there are Windows and Mac versions as well, along with if you don't have a deb compatible um, Linux distribution, like if you're not using something Debian based, you can also get a flat pack. They also have it uh, available via, via flat pack and you can use it as a standalone app. So exi for example, I could just have it on my computer right here and just keep everything local. Now that doesn't allow for sharing. If you want to be able to have those public shares, like I do for my weekend assignment, you need to install uh, the sync server, which again is available uh, at the GitHub repository, it's all completely free. There's no uh, there's no hidden fees or anything like that. And the easiest way that I found to do it is using a Docker installation. In fact, it's all included in just one very simplistic Docker container. If you go to the GitHub page, it shows you how to do it very, very simply. Uh, for example, I, if you scroll down, uh, the avail available anywhere sort of thing. Uh, it literally shows you the command to copy and paste. Now, of course, I use systemctl to control my Docker containers, and I'll try to remember to put a link up there pointing to that video. Uh, that's how I start and stop Docker containers. Uh, but anyway, you just do this, and uh, it will run the sync server, and then you just point your client on the multiple platforms. Like I said, it works on Linux and works on Mac and Windows. And then you go into the menu options, the sync tab right here, and then you just put in your uh, your publicly accessible thing. Now, the one thing that you also have to do is if you have it running on a Docker container, you'll notice it's using port 8080 internally. Um, what I have is a reverse proxy using Caddy. Again, I'll try to remember to put a link up there. I use Caddy for reverse proxies uh, so that it, it will be um, secure using SSL automatically. Uh, you can use Nginx or Apache, whatever you want for a reverse proxy. Uh, and that will encrypt the data back to your Docker container running inside your network. Now, again, it's pretty simple. You go and, and you type that in and it will have you authenticate one time. So I'll show you what it looks like. You can also approach it on the web. So if you just go to uh, my server, it'll ask you for a password. It does not have multiple users. I guess that's important to note. It's just a single user kind of thing. So it's just my server. I couldn't give you a, an account on it if I wanted. There are no user accounts. Uh, but during the setup of the Docker container, that's where you set up the um, uh, your, your password and then type that in and you can log in and use it on the web. It looks exactly like this and uh, it will all sync up using that backend server. Now, it is important to note there is not a native mobile client, meaning there's not an iOS app, there's not an Android app. There is a mobile web version of the actual like web thing that we kind of just showed logging in. So you can hit it on the web on your mobile device, but I have to admit it's not terribly wonderful as an experience. So if I need to retrieve something, I can quickly log in on my mobile device, but it really works best on the desktop. 
However, since it's all open, that means somebody could design a really cool mobile app. And I hope somebody does, because uh, that's something I'd even be willing to pay for. Uh, because yeah, it's it's a great system. It, it has synced flawlessly for me across multiple computers. I, I've just never had any issue with it. And the Docker container is super small, super easy to install. It's just, it's, it really is great. And the sharing feature is really what uh, sold it for me because I really want to be able to create those, uh, those weekend assignment things in Markdown, which is what it supports, and then just have a link that can share out for public view only look at the notes that I keep. But there is one more cool feature that I haven't used a whole lot, mainly because I forget that it's so awesome. So you can see here, I have all of these weekend assignments and I just keep adding to them. And then, you know, I, I do that shared thing where I can share a link. However, if you are browsing on the web and you have like Firefox or Chrome or a Chrome variant, like I use Brave here, you can install this nice little extension, which is the Trillium Web Clipper. Again, completely free. And if you install it, it will have you log into your sync server or possibly, I think, I think it tries two things. It will try to connect to a local running uh, program like my my Trillium instance is running on this local computer, so it directly connects to that. But it will also connect to a sync server uh, if you don't have the local one running. It tries both. Anyway, I go to this website. Let's say I want to uh, keep a record of like what the weather was going to be for this week. I have no idea why I'd want to do that, but uh, I click on the web clipper, and then we have different options. We have we could uh, crop a screenshot, basically just save an image. It'll allow. Well, I'll show you. A drag and release to capture a screenshot. Okay, I want to keep that for posterity. So now it's created a link. Let's go over here into web clippings and you'll see on the bottom here. Why, look at that. There's that image that we just clicked already on my server and already synced across all the platforms and on that back end uh, server. So let's see. We could also do save the whole screenshot. And if we do that, come over here. You will add it to the bottom of this page. So that's the entire thing. It added it to the same note because we're on the same page. Apparently, I didn't even know that. I've never tried to clip it in multiple ways. Uh, go over here. Let's see if we wanted to do. So we did the whole screenshot. What if we wanted to save the whole page? Click on that. It created a new one over here. Let's see what this looks like. And we'll see. It looks like it just copied the text. So not as useful. But it did have a link to the original one. So I guess that's interesting. And then let's see what else we can do. Uh, save a link with a note or save the Windows tab. Windows tabs as a list for browser. Oh, all of my browser tabs as a link of list. That's kind of cool too. So anyway, the web clipper is a really neat sort of a thing and it allows you multiple ways, obviously to store data, but you should check because especially like that save page, just the text on this page was not terribly useful. Uh, so just make sure that you're saving what you actually want to save. Uh, but I love Trillium. It has been such an amazing tool, particularly for sharing things like this. At first I was using Next Cloud, I couldn't think of the name of it. Uh, Next Cloud, and that sort of worked fine for sharing things publicly, but this is much cleaner, much nicer, much faster. And it shares uh, the public link from the um, sync server. So I don't have to worry like if this app is open, it just shares it from that sync server, which is publicly accessible uh, behind my reverse proxy. Anyway, of all the note-taking apps that I've installed and used over the years, I have to admit Trillium is really fast, really simplistic. I love it. I just hope that someday it gets a mobile app because that would really make the uh, everything about it just perfect for me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will hopefully get the weekend assignment written up, uh, but remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video and hopefully this Sunday.